Hello guys, this is Sayyid Muhammad Wakas. I'm back with another video. In this video, I will tell you guys about uh, heat load calculation for TIR building. So I'm gonna calculate the heat load for summer condition as well as moon uh, monsoon condition. So this is the E20 load sheet which I'm gonna use for heat load calculation. So before starting the load calculation, I'm gonna discuss uh, the tables and the charts with you because if you understand the tables and charts then it will be easy for you to calculate the heat load but before that I'm gonna tell you that this building is located as you can see that the uh, space reference this building is located in uh, Rorkela, Odisha, India and I'm gonna calculate the heat load for 40 seat lecture room first Actually, I have divided this video in three or four parts. If you see the space schedule over here, building space schedule, there are so many rooms here and it consists of four floors, ground floor, first floor, second floor and third floor. So today in this video, I'm going to discuss this 40 seat lecture room heat load calculation for summer as well as monsoon conditions. As you see that uh, doors and windows schedule is also given over here what type of door is used here what type of window is used here and their dimensions is also given in meter and the feet for doors and windows so move back to our E20 sheet so as you know that this building is located in Rorkela, Odisha, India so uh, first of all we need to check the design conditions indoor and outdoor design conditions so move back to our tables and charts first you need to understand these tables and charts and then we will proceed to the e20 load sheet for load calculation so in the first tab as you can see that we have uh, given the overall heat transfer coefficient u values for the exposed walls partition walls roof ceiling floors and the glass each one is given so i have used the conversion factor over here if you want to use the other units so you can use uh, this one also we are going to use this watt per square meter degree celsius and the second tab you will find uh, the building spacing the weight length and uh, height is given uh, for each and every room and the window schedule and door schedule i already told you about this one you can see over here and in the third tab you can find the cltd because we are going to use the cltd method for load calculation so we will calculate CLTD for different types of the wall exposure. So before that you need to understand one thing indoor and outdoor design conditions for the Rorkela in uh, Odisha India. So we know that for the most comfort condition recommended indoor temperature is 22.78 to 26.11 for summer with 50% relative humidity. And uh, for winter conditions uh, recommended temperature is 22.1 to 22.22 with relative humidity 20 to 30 percent so the temperature which we have selected for this TIR building is based on 23 degrees celsius that is 74 degrees for night dry bulb and 50 percent relative humidity indoor design conditions for this building this is the selected indoor design condition and the outdoor design condition you can get from the weather bureau or the airport records or from the local authorities in your area so we know that from the local authorities uh, the outdoor design temperature of Rokila is 43 degrees celsius with the dry bulb and relative humidity is 46 percent for summer and design month for summer is may and for monsoon outdoor design bulb tem temperature is 36 degrees celsius and uh, with 84 percent relative humidity and design month of monsoon is july this is very important to know that the design months for summer design month is may and for monsoon design month is july and uh, longitude is 84.54 east and uh, longitude is latitude is 22.12 degree north and elevation is 219 meters above sea level so as we know that the indoor outdoor design conditions so let's move back to our excel sheet and first we have to give the area 
of this uh, 40 seat lecture room that is 122.9 this is the drawing of this room you can see over here we have uh, four windows w1 and two doors with the d4 and you can see that uh, southeast wall is exposed to sun this is an outer wall and this uh, southwest northeast and northwest these are our partition walls because we have a non-conditioned space over there and this is the outer wall so length of the room is given as 14.17 width is 8.67 and the height is 3.4 meter ceiling height so area of the glass we know that uh, we have calculated over here uh, it is given that area of the glass which window is used over here that is w1 so w1 window width is 1.5 and height is 1.8 so width is 1.5 and height is 1.8 area is 2.7 square meter this is for one glass so we have four glass need to multiply with the four area of the door d4 area of the door same you can get from the schedule d4 that is 1.5 into 2.7 1.5 into 2.7 that is 4.05 square meter so total sun facing area glass area is since we have four glass in this window on the outer wall that is 2.7 into 4 that is 10.8 square meter so outside wall area for this since this wall is facing southeast we need to get the area for this wall if you know that this length is 14.17 into the ceiling height we know that this is 3.4 so 14.17 into 3.4 minus we need to minus this glass area from the wall in order to get the net area of the wall so if we minus this uh, glass area we will get 37.378 uh, square meters is the outside wall area for the southeast wall and the partition walls we have northeast southwest and northwest so northeast, northwest and southwest. So this partition wall, this is 14.17, this is 8.67. So two walls 8.67. So 8.67 into ceiling height 3.4. And the other wall is also 8.67 into ceiling height 3.4 plus the third wall over here. But we need to subtract the door area D4. Two doors we have. One door is 4.08. 4.05 you need to multiply with 2 so this length is 14.17 into ceiling height 3.4 minus 2 doors you will get the partition wall area 99.034 square meters so since we have calculated uh, everything we are going to use here in our E20 sheet so now we have to write the design conditions for summer and monsoon. Summer we know that design dry bulb is 43 we already checked from our tables and charts here as you can see 43 outside dry bulb is 43 for summer and for monsoon 36 with the 46% for relative humidity for summer and 84% for monsoon. So 43 is the dry bulb temperature outside and indoor we already know that we have selected 23 degrees celsius and outdoor relative humidity is 46 and uh, indoor relative humidity we already know that from here 50 percent so we know that 43 outdoor dry bulb and relative humidity 46 percent so we need to get these values from the psychrometric calculator wet bulb and humidity ratio how you will get that we know that 43 degree dry bulb outside and 46% relative humidity so we will get the wet bulb and humidity ratio so this is the calculator which I am going to use so 46 43 is the outside dry bulb temperature and relative humidity outside is 46% so as you can see that wet bulb calculated is 31.8 and humidity ratio is 0 0.0254 so 32 and 0 0.0254 so in the same way you, you know that monsoon outside dry bulb is 36 from here with relative humidity 84% for monsoon so 84% so we know that outside dry bulb temperature we know that relative humidity 
so same way you can get the wet bulb and humidity ratio from this calculator psychrometric calculator so indoor design conditions which we have selected is 23 degree dry bulb and 50 percent relative humidity so we know these two parameters if we put uh, these two parameters in calculator psychrometric we can get this wet bulb and humidity ratio so 23 is the indoor dry bulb temperature and 50 percent relative humidity 23 and 50 percent relative humidity if you calculate wet bulb is 16 and humidity ratio is 0 0.0088 kg per kg so 16 and 0 0.0088 same way you can do for moon phone and then you will calculate the difference for each because we are going to use this temperature difference and humidity ratio difference in our calculations so before proceeding for load calculation for solar heat gain for glass and transmission few things you need to understand from the tables and charts first we have to calculate the CLTD for this TIAR building for different uh, exposure of the walls different direction of the exposure of the walls so let's go to the next step you have uh, different uh, temperatures here for Rorkila, India, Odisha as you can see that the average high temperature is 29.7 degrees Celsius and low is 18 and relative humidity according to months is given as if you remember that uh, summer design driver temperature is uh, 43 with uh, relative humidity 46 percent so this is 46 percent relative humidity we got from here you can check uh, over here also and monsoon relative humidity is 84 percent monsoon relative humidity is 84 percent for the month of July and these are the CLTD, wall, CLTD values for D types of the walls but these are uncorrected CLTDs for corrected CLTD you need to use this formula that is corrected CLTD is equal to CLTD plus LM into K plus 25.5 minus TI plus T naught minus 29.4 here LM is the latitude month correction CLTD is uncorrected you can get from this table or another table I will show you later and K is the correction factor depending on the building color K is 1 for dark color 0.8 for medium and 0.65 for the light color since we have dark color walls we are going to use K1 TI is the inside design temperature and T naught is the outside design temperature next step we have CLTD when the wall is heavier and uh, latitude month correction for 24 degree north latitude since our building is located in 22 degree north latitude we don't have uh, 22 degree north latitude table so nearest uh, table we got here is 24 degree north latitude so we are going to use this table for latitude month correction values and uh, you can see over here this is the solar heat gain factor as a gf maximum for maximum solar heat gain factors for the glass for different months and for different directions next table over here is the cooling load factor for the glass for different time of the month and for different directions then we have a rate of heat gain from the occupants so according to the occupancy of the people we will get the sensible heat and latent heat values from this table and then we have a table for lightning load for different types of buildings for different types of uh, spaces and then we have a heat gain for office equipments like computer, monitor, laser printer and photocopier machines then we have uh, infiltration load calculation for infiltration load calculation we have number of air changes per hour we can get from here number of air changes per hour and then ventilation rate per person per area is given from this table in CFM per person or cubic meter per minute per person and then CFM per square feet and outdoor air cubic meter 
per minute per square meter so both units you are it is given here and these are the formulas which we are going to use in our e20 sheet these are main important formulas first one is uh, amount of infiltration is calculated by this formula volume of the space into air changes per hour divided by 60 then sensible heat factor is equal to total sensible heat divided by total heat of the room and uh, load in a ton is calculated by total load in a watt divided by 3500 so this is by mistake it should be 3500 not 35000 so 3500 and overall heat transfer from outside uh, and the rate of heat transfer from outside to inside is calculated by formula q is equal to q a c l t d corrected and sensible heat gain due to infiltration is calculated by q sensible infiltration is this formula and q infiltration uh, latent heat is calculated by this formula these 20.44 and 50,000 are the constant factors and T naught I is outside inside design temperatures and uh, V W naught and W I are the specific humidity of the outside outside conditions and inside conditions and V infiltration is calculated by this formula so we need to use this value over here to calculate the infiltration load so as you know all the tables over here so let's move back to our excel sheet and start doing the calculation so we already know the area we know the ceiling height volume volume is calculated by multiplying this area with the ceiling height you will get the volume that is 417 cubic meter this we already added here and now the bypass factor by default oh, we have bypass factor is 0.12 normally it is 0.12 so contact factor is 1 minus bypass factor 1 minus 0.12 you will get bypass factor number of air changes per hour is 1 so how did we get this number of air changes per hour that is 1 go back to our tables and charts so as you can see that this is the number of air changes per hour for kind of the room or the building room with no windows or outside doors it's 0 0.5 to 0 0.75 room with one wall exposed since we have one wall exposed as you can see that this is only one wall exposed to the sunlight so we are going to use a number of air changes per hour that is one in ashray book you can find uh, a lot of building spaces with the air changes per hour so we are going to use one here since we have one wall exposed sun facing wall that is southeast so that's why we have used number of air changes per hour one and infiltration load as i already told you about this one infiltration load is infiltration is, is flow rate is calculated by this formula that is volume of space into air changes per hour divided by 60. so this is the volume into a number of air changes per hour that is 1 divided by 60 so you will get the infiltration flow rate is 7 cubic meter per minute cubic meter per minute so let's me add the unit here so this is the infiltration rate 7 cubic meter per minute and shading coefficient you can get from the glass supplier shading coefficient we use here is 1 so first we will calculate the solar heat gain for the glass as you can see in the drawing this is the wall exposed to sun this is the outer wall and uh, how many glass we have here 1 2 3 4 and one glass area is 2.7 and 10 glass area is uh, 4 glass area is 2.7 into 4 that is 10.8 square meters so since we have only one glass that is x in the wall this one solar heat gain for the glass since we have only one glass and its area is 10.8 square meters and uh, u factor for the uh, it's not the u factor this one you can get from the table i will show you now south is wall we have 10.8 square meters glass area and the, this factor we can calculate from the table 
since this wall is facing southeast so move back to our table first we will get the solar heat gain factor from here for the southeast wall since we are calculating we need to calculate for summer and monsoon both so first for summer solar heat gain factor this one 372 how did we get this so since uh, may is the design temperature for summer and southeast wall exposure this is southeast and may is the design temperature uh, design month so southeast wall uh, maximum solar heat gain factor for 22 degree north latitude is 372 degrees 372 watt per square meters so 372 this is how we get 372 and for southeast for monsoon for monsoon design month is july so this is 360 solar heat gain factor for july for southeast wall that is 360 watt per square meter this is how we get 360 watt per square meter and the last we need to get the factor from the table for the glass cooling load factor cooling load factor for the glass so we can get this cooling load factor of the glass from table 3.10 so cooling load factor for glass window glass with indoor shading since we have southeast exposure and the maximum load will occur at 3 pm 3 pm of the solar time so for southeast 3 pm southeast 3 pm this is the value of cooling load factor southeast 15 that is 3 pm so cooling load factor is 0.25 cooling load factor is 0.25 that's how we got 0.25 if you have uh, other wall exposed so same way you can get the cooling load factors so what we have to do now we have to multiply this area with cooling load factor with solar heat gain factor maximum into shading coefficient so this is the formula we have used shading coefficient into solar heat gain factor maximum into cooling load factor into area so this is how we get uh, 1004 watts for solar heat gain for the glass exposed to southeast wall so in the same way you have to calculate this one in this point you have to use 360 instead of 372 so since we have only one glass exposed outside that is to the southeast direction so totals solar heat gain for the glass is 1004 for summer and for monsoon is 972 watts so next we have solar and transmission gain for the walls and roof so this is also for outside wall so as you know that we already calculated the outside wall area outside wall is southeast and its area is 37.5 37 after subtracting the glass area 37.3 so southeast wall 37.3 that is 37.4 we have used here and for the wall u factor is 1.07 we already know from the table this outside wall u factor is 1.07 and uh, then we have to calculate the CLTD now this is very important to calculate the CLTD let's move back to our tables here CLTD corrected we have to use the corrected CLTD here so CLTD corrected is equal to CLTD uncorrected plus LM into K plus 25.5 minus TI plus T naught minus 29.7 so ti is the inside design temperature t naught is the outside design temperature this for summer and monsoon both we have to use one by one so how did we get cltd since our I move back here
as you can see that uh, the exposed walls of the buildings are thermally heavier than group D type wall due to added insulation than uncorrected CLTD of the wall from the table 3.7 so our walls used here are heavier than D type walls so that's why we have used table 3.7 so we are going to use this table 3.7 because our walls are, is heavier due to added insulation. So as you can see that for different directions CLTD uncorrected values are given here for north, northeast, east, southeast, south, southwest, west and northwest. So we are going to use these values. Direction north we have right here CLTD values the same which we have seen here 6, 9, 12, 12, 9, 12, 12, 9. So same and k as i already told you we have uh, dark color walls so we have used k value 1 and lm is the latitude month correction factor you can find here for 24 degree north latitude we don't have table for 22 so we have used the closest one that is 24 degree north latitude as you can see over here for the different exposure of the walls so we know that summer design drive-up temperature is 43 and monsoon design drive-up temperature is 36 from here and inside design temperature which we have selected is 23 degrees celsius so after putting all the values here one time you have to use T0 is 43 and second for summer the month of May and second time you have to use T0 36 for monsoon so after using all the values you will calculate the CLTD corrected for north exposure of the wall for northeast for east for southeast for each and every one you can calculate the corrected CLTD values so this is how you can calculate the corrected CLTD values now move back to our excel sheet since this wall is uh, exposed to southeast direction southeast direction so this is the southeast direction for summer design month is may and uh, corrected cltd is 24.8 24.8 and monsoon it is 17.8 so 24.8 and 17.8 for monsoon so 24.8 this is how we got this temperature difference cltd value and 17.8 uh, for monsoon so how you calculate uh, the heat load you need to multiply this wall area with u factor into cltd u a cltd so you will get uh, the load that is 992 watts same way you have to calculate for monsoon in this time you have used this temperature cltd 17.8 for monsoon so roof since we have uh, this area or space on the ground floor and uh, uh, space above this room is conditioned that's why this roof load is zero because the space above this room is conditioned that's why we have roof load zero so southeast wall total is so the solar and transmission gain is 992 for summer and 700 for monsoon now transmission gain except walls and the roof all glass all glass area we have here is uh, 4 glass 2.7 into 4 10.8 square meter this is the transmission gain except walls and the roof first we calculate the solar now transmission gain for the glass 10.8 is the area of the glass u factor you can get from tables and charts as you can see the u factor for glass is 5.6 floor 4.5 ceiling 2.8 partition wall 1.86 so glass 5.6 partition wall is 1.86 and uh, ceiling is 2.8 and floor is 4.5 and partition wall area we already calculated here as you can see this is the partition wall area 99.034 99.034 ceiling area is same as our room area and floor area is same as our room area so now the last thing which we have to calculate here is the temperature difference because we are going to use uh, ua delta t formula over here to calculate the load requirement of transmission gain 
through the glass partition wall and the ceiling and the floor u a delta t so we know that a we know that u you have to calculate delta t delta t for summer we already calculated here summer delta t design driver temperature is 20 and monsoon design driver temperature is outside minus inside 13 so 20 for summer and 13 more for monsoon 20 for summer and 13 for monsoon same value we have used here so how you get the load you need to multiply this u a and delta t same for monsoon u a and delta t is for monsoon in the same way you have to calculate for partition ceiling and the floor and then add all these loads together you will get the total transmission gain except for walls and the roof total transmission gain is 1000 for 17467 watts for summer and for monsoon is 9457 watts so now infiltration load we have to calculate infiltration c infiltration flow rate was already calculated before if you remember infiltration flow rate is this one that is 7 cubic meter per minute 7 and if you remember that the formula which I told you for infiltration load calculation this is the formula for sensible and this is for the latent so constant factor we use here is 2.4 20.44 as per formula into 20.44 into wind infiltration into T naught minus Ti and 50,000 into wind filtration W0 minus WI. This is the humidity ratio difference outside and inside design conditions. So, this is a formula 20.44 and temperature difference is same for summer and monsoon. We already know that it is 20 for summer and 13 for monsoon. so 20 for summer and 13 for monsoon so you need to multiply all these values in the infiltration into 20.44 into temperature difference you will get the infiltration load for summer and for monsoon with delta t, uh, with delta t this one and now you have to calculate the internal heat load due to the people lights and appliances so number of people you can get this from architecture since we know that 14 number of people we can get this from the seating plan since we know that 40 people are going to accommodate uh, this space so we have used 40 people and the factor how much watt required per person since this is the 40 seat lecture room so move back to our tables and charts So this is the rate of heat gain from the occupants we can get from this table as you can see over here this is the seated very light work so this co column this row we are going to use for the office seated very light work so sensible heat is 70 and latent heat is 45 70 and 45 watt per person so sensible is uh, 70 and latent we are gonna use here for the people that is 40 45 so 40 number of people and uh, 70 watt per person is required so for summer you need to multiply this together you will get total watt it will be same for monsoon for lightning load we know that the area of the space is 122.9 and lightning how much watt per square meter is required we can get from the table here so this is the table we are going to use typical lightning load since we have a lecture training room and you can see the lightning power is watt per square meter 15 watt per square meter for lecture classroom or training 15 watt per square meter this one so this is why we have used 15 watt per square meter you need to multiply this with the area you will get the total watts required due to the lightning same for the monsoon there is no power from other equipment so it's zero 
now the total sensible heat load we need to sum up all the load which we have calculated above that is uh, solar heat gain transmission heat gain for the walls and the roof for glass partition ceiling for inf uh, and then infiltration load due to the people lightning all of these sum together here so room sensible heat load is this much for summer and this much for monsoon and then we are going to use 10 percent safety factor for both so total room sensible heat load is 29650 watts uh, for summer for monsoon is 19399 watts and then room latent heat calculation latent heat calculation uh, infiltration air we know that 7 cubic meter per minute we already calculated before so the same formula which we are going to use for the latent heat 50,000 feet infiltration W0 minus WI so 50,000 is the constant factor we know the flow rate and humidity difference how did we get 0 0.0166 you can see over here humidity ratio difference is 0 0.01 for summer and uh, for monsoon is 0 0.0234 So 0 0.0166 for summer and 0 0.0234 for monsoon. So you just need to multiply these three factors. You will get the total watt latent heat due to the infiltration load. And then over here also for monsoon, you need to multiply this one, this one and humidity ratio for monsoon. And then latent heat due to the people. Since we have 40 people and we already know from the table that is 45 what required per person for the latent heat so 14 to 45 you will get 1800 watts for summer and 1800 for the monsoon so total latent heat is uh, that much and 5% safety factor if we add it will be this much so 5% safety factor and total latent heat so if you add them you will get the total latent heat here that is 7900 is the total latent heat and if you want to get the total room heat you need to sum room sensible and room latent total heat for room sensible total heat for room latent so it will give you 37,000 that is room sensible heat and room latent heat this is the total heat for the room for summer and for monsoon then finally we have to calculate this outside air heat outside uh, how much uh, is required per person or per uh, square meters we need to get this from table so this is the ventilation requirement per person and per area per square meter of the area since we have a lecture room so we are going to use this row and outdoor air cubic meter per person is 0.23 and we know that we have 40 people so 0.23 is uh, cubic meter per minute per person we have 40 person so 9.2 cubic meter per minute due to the number of people and then due to the area also we have to calculate because it is the sum of uh, outdoor air due to the person and due to the area so 9.2 it's due to the people and due to the area outdoor air requirement is 0 0.02 cubic meter per minute per square meter we know that the area is 122.9 square meters multiply by 0 0.02 this is due to the area 2.4 cubic meter so 2.5 plus 9.2 total 11.65 so same we have used here that is 2.5 and 9.2 it is 11.7 cubic meter per minute this is for sensible heat load calculation due to the outside air and the contact factor we know that it's 1 minus bypass factor bypass factor we already know it's 0 0.12 so contact factor is 0 0.88 if you remember that we already calculated here 
This is the contact factor 0.18. And then this is the formula constant factor 20.44. And summer design we know that it's 20 and monsoon is 13 degrees centigrade. So you need to multiply this outdoor air flow rate requirement with contact factor with this constant factor and temperature difference you will get the watt for the summer same way you will get the watt for the moon soon but this time you need to take this temperature 13 then you have to calculate uh, this is the sensible load for summer and the moon soon now outside air latent heat load for summer and moon soon this time you have to use uh, humidity ratio difference we know that uh, already calculated before these values so we have to use these values over here so for summer it's calculated as uh, 8546 watt and for monsoon 12000 watts so total heat load is calculated as here for summer is 50000 for monsoon is 44600 so total is the sum of this room total heat plus heat load due to the outside air for sensible and latent this is the total heat load so now we have to add 5% safety factor for both summer and monsoon and the grand total will be the sum of these two so grand total will be the sum of these two that is 52882 for summer and 46858 for monsoon and now we have to calculate the tonnage tonnage is uh, total watts divided by 3500 you will get the tonnage for the system as you can see that total watt is 52882 divided by 3500 you will get 15.1 ton AC requirement and 13.4 15.1 for the summer and 13.4 for the monsoon and sensible heat factor we have to calculate here that is room sensible heat divided by room total heat sensible heat we already calculated here that is 29,000 divided by total heat is 37,000 if you will divide you will get the sensible heat factor values sensible heat factor values and uh, same way you will calculate for uh, moon zone that is 0.65 so ADP uh, I don't have a chart right now, but later I am gonna add this chart If you remember that the heat load calculations I performed in my tutorial number 16 and 17 You can use the same table and chart. I don't have it right now, but I'm gonna add it later so you can use the uh, That chart and after using the chart you will get the ADP that is 10.3 degrees Celsius for uh, This summer and 7 degrees Celsius for monsoon and then finally we have to calculate the dehumidified air quantity so dehumidified rise first we have to calculate that is 1 minus bypass factor into room temperature minus ADP we know that bypass factor that is uh, 0.12 into room temperature we know that 23 degrees Celsius and uh, ADP 10 10.3 for summer so dehumidified rise is 11.17 for summer and moon zone is 14 so now we have to calculate the dehumidified air requirement for summer and for moon zone humidified air requirement for summer is uh, room sensible heat divided by 20.4 into dehumidified rise so room sensible heat we already calculated before as you see over here this one divided by 20.4 into dehumidified rise this one 11.176 so after that we get the dehumidified air is 130 cubic meter per minute for summer and 67 for the monsoon so now we are going to use 5% safety factor for summer and monsoon and final dehumidified air quantity we have calculated for summer is 136 cubic meter per minute and 71 cubic meter per minute for the monsoon so we are going to select machine based on summer because this will gonna fulfill the requirement for the monsoon also so whatever is larger we are going to select machine 
but basically we select machine based on two conditions first is your flow rate that is 136 cubic meter per minute and second is your static pressure calculations so based on these things we are going to select the machine for 40 seat lecture room so this is the load calculation for one room 40 seat lecture room in the next video I am gonna discuss uh, load calculation for some other room with the different parameters this one so first I have used this one so next time I'm gonna use to some other room so if you have any doubts maybe it will be clear in my next video so basically this video will have uh, four parts first part is covered in second and third and fourth part I'm gonna use some other space to calculate the heat load so the purpose here for calculating for different spaces each one of them will have a different uh, exposure to the walls different parameters so it will help you if you have any doubts today I'm gonna continue the last topic this is the part 2 of uh, cooling load calculation of TIAR building so if you remember that last time we had calculated for 40 seat lecture room cooling load so in this uh, part 2 I'm gonna calculate the cooling load for central design office in TIAR building so let's move back to our tables and charts as you can see that last time I have calculated for this 40 seat lecture room located on the ground floor this time I'm gonna I'm gonna calculate the cooling load for central design office as you can see over here located on the first floor of TIAR building so if you remember that the outdoor and indoor design conditions from here just to revise these are the outdoor design conditions and indoor design condition of uh, the building located in Roar Kela, Odisha, India as you can see over here uh, I'm not gonna discuss this again you can check in the part 1 for this thing because otherwise video will gonna be much longer so let's move back to our E20 sheet so this is the drawing of this uh, of central design office as you can see that we have a three sun facing wall that is northeast uh, then northwest and then southwest and this one wall you can see uh, on the right side we have the conditioned space over here to the southeast wall so we have three outside wall over here sun facing walls as you can see that the room dimension is given as length of the room is 14.17 width is 20.09 and height is 3.32 you can get these values from the schedule also building space schedule over here that is width is 20.1 length is 14.2 and uh, ceiling height is 3.3 feet uh, meter or feet so area of the glass since you can see over here in this drawing we have w3 glass in the every wall so from the schedule you can see the w3 glass w3 glass is this one UPVC window and width of glass is 3 and height of glass is 1.8 meter so 3 meter into 1.8 meter so 3 meter into 1.8 meter so area of each glass W3 is 5.4 square meters and area of door is 1.5 into 2.7 same you can get from the schedule that is 4.05 square meters so now we have to calculate the outside wall area net outside wall area of the northeast wall southwest wall and northwest wall first is northeast wall the sun facing wall three windows area you need to subtract from the total wall area you will get the northeast same way you need to subtract three glass area from southwest wall you will get the southwest wall area net area and two windows here you need to subtract two windows each window area is 5.4 so two window area will be 10.8 square meters you need to subtract 10.8 square meter from the total uh, wall area of the northwest wall then you will get the net wall area of the northwest wall then northeast side glass area southwest glass area and northwest glass area 
since we have three glass here in the northeast and southwest glass each glass area is uh, 5.4 square meters so three glass area into 5.4 16.2 16.2 and northwest we have two glass that is 10.8 square meter one glass is 5.4 two glasses 10.8 square meters so move back here this one we need to change Central Design Office, Rorkela, Odisha, India. And area we already checked over here that is uh, 284.70 square meters. You can check from the schedule. In the schedule you can see that this 284.70 square meters. This one is the area in square meters that is 284.68 that is 284.7 square meters. And then ceiling height you can also get from schedule 3.32 meter. The volume you just need to multiply area with the fall ceiling height. You can get the volume in a cubic meter. And then design conditions are already explained in my uh, part 1. So you can check the part 1 for these design conditions. You need to get add the dry bulb and relative humidity and you can calculate this wet bulb and humidity ratio and this is for summer condition and this one is for the monsoon condition since monsoon outdoor des design trial will be 36 and relative humidity is 84 so i am telling again once again for these uh, conditions outdoor and indoor design condition you can check the part one i am skipping the because the same thing i explained in the part one will gonna be used here in the part two part 1 of this video cooling load calculation for 40 seat lecture room and then bypass factor I told you it's normally 0.12 and contact factor is 1 minus bypass factor 1 minus 0.12 that is 0.88 then number of air changes per hour you can get from the tables and charts and here you can see that uh, uh, kind of room or the building number of air changes per hour since we have three walls since we have a three walls exposed to sun so number of air changes per hour i'm gonna use two you can find a lot of tables in the ashway this is as per india standard so every time you have to follow local stand local codes of your area so in the ashway you will find a lot of tables for number of air changes per hour so here we're gonna use two air changes per hour because three balls exposed to sun so two and then infiltration rate is calculated by the formula which i already explained in my part one video you can check in the tables and charts the formula this one we have used to calculate the infiltration rate and then shading coefficient is one you can get this value from the supplier of the glass so since we have three in first we calculate the solar heat gain of the glass for the northeast wall, southwest wall, and then northwest wall, because we have a three walls having glass, three outside walls having glass. So first, northeast wall area as you the northeast wall area is glass area is uh, 16.2, southwest is 16.2, and northwest is 10.8. So first, we have to write the area 16.2, 16.2, 10.8. Then we have to write the solar heat gain factor SHGF maximum for each glass exposed to the sun so first we write for northeast wall go back to our chart as you can see that uh, this is the Sorry, this is not uh, solar heat gain factor. This this one is solar heat gain factor. This is watt per square meter, and this one is our cooling load factor. This is our cooling load factor, and uh, this one is our SHGF, solar heat gain factor maximum. Same. This is our solar heat gain factor maximum. This is for the summer condition. This is for the monsoon condition. So 
first we get the solar heat gain factor how did we get 527 watt per square meters for northeast wall summer condition if you remember that in part one of my video i told you summer for summer the design month is may and for monsoon design month is july so we are going to see northeast wall for the month of may we need to get solar heat gain factor from the table northeast wall so northeast wall as you can see that this is 22 2 degree north latitude for northeast wall this is the northeast wall summer we have designed month is may so 527 for may and for july july is the design month for monsoon so 527 for summer and 520 watt per square meter for july this is a solar heat gain factor value so 527 for summer and 520 is for the monsoon same value and the second thing is cooling load factor we need to check from the table for northeast wall this is the cooling load factor for the glass with indoor shading since the maximum or a peak peak time of the day occurs at between 2 to 3 pm so we're gonna take uh, 3 pm over here and we have a northeast wall so cooling load factor at 3 pm is 0.22 for northeast wall 0.22 so after that you just need to multiply this area with the cooling load factor with solar heat gain factor into shading coefficient so then you will get the uh, load over here for x for this northeast wall northeast wall glass area due to the glass because this is a solar heat gain for the glass same way you have to calculate for monsoon condition you just need to multiply all these values and you will get the monsoon load over here this area cooling load factor and this solar heat gain factor and then shading coefficient here same way you have to calculate uh, for southwest wall and northwest wall after that you just need to sum up these wall area these uh, glass areas after that you have to sum up these uh, loads for each glass then you will get the total solar heat gain of the glass for summer as well as monsoon then you have to calculate the solar and transmission gain for the walls and the roof so this one as you can see that we have a three walls exposed this is the solar and transmission gain except for walls and roof then we calculate the northeast wall then we calculate for southwest and then northwest so i'm going to show for northwest same way, same way you can calculate for northeast and northwest so you can see that i already calculate the outside wall areas 50.4 6 square meter for northeast, southwest also same, northwest is 36.24. So all areas I have written over here. And then I'm gonna calculate for this one first. As you see the U factor value is 1.07 for the outside wall. You can get these from the tables and charts already explained in my part 1 video. This one 1.07 for outside exposed walls and then we have to calculate the temperature this is the cltd corrected value for southwest wall so this also you have to get from table for moon summer as well as monsoon so first we get for summer and then we get for monsoon for southwest wall move back to our tables and charts cltd so first is uh, south southwest wall we calculate southwest wall if you remember that this table i already explained in part one of my video so you can check over there i'm gonna skip this one just i, I just tell you the value for summer as well as monsoon southwest wall this formula is used to calculate the corrected cltd that that is for may summer it's 24.8 for monsoon july it's 17.8 for southwest wall so 24.8, 17.8. So 24.8 for summer and 17.8 for monsoon. The same way you can calculate for northeast wall and northwest wall. 
by using the tables and charts so how you calculate the load you just need to multiply this area with the uh, u factor with cltd corrected you can get the load for summer you can get the load for monsoon so total solar and transmission gain for walls and the roof will be the sum of all these loads and uh, for summer as well as monsoon so transmission gain except walls and the roof so now we have to calculate the transmission gain for the glass partition ceiling and the floor so all glass used in the this space how much is the glass area total 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 glass we have used each one has same dimension and each glass area is 5.4 so 8 glass area will be how much 43.2 square meters so 43.2 square meter we have used for the glass area since there is no partition wall here we have a conditioned space over here so there is no partition wall here in this space so that's why area is zero and there will be no load to the partition wall and then ceiling area is same as our floor area we already calculated that is 284.7 square meter also the this is the space located on the first floor and we have a conditioned space below this floor ground floor the space below this central design office is also conditioned that's why there is no floor load over here that's why we took the floor area zero because the space below this central design office is also conditioned so two things only will be participate in the load calculation that is glass and the ceiling so glass u value and ceiling u value you can get from the tables and charts as I already explained in my part 1 video and then this uh, temperature difference will be delta T X, I will explain again how did I get 20 for summer and 13 for monsoon 20 for summer is calculated how this is the outside dry bulb minus inside design temperature that is 20 for summer and monsoon outside is 36 and inside is 13 inside is 23 so difference is 13 and the humidity ratio again outside minus inside you will get this one delta H for summer and then monsoon outside humidity minus inside humidity ratio you will get delta H for monsoon is this much so this is how we get uh, 20 degree here delta T and uh, 13 for the monsoon and for ceiling I told you for ceiling it will be 5 degree less than this temperature outside minus inside minus 5 degree will be the ceiling temperature same outside minus inside that is 13 minus 5 degree less that will be the monsoon temperature delta t so after that you just need to multiply this area with uh, u into delta t for glass same for the ceiling area u into delta t for the ceiling and total transmission gain will be the sum of these values for summer and these values for the monsoon so this is our total transmission gain for summer and this is for monsoon and then infiltration and bypass air infiltration air we already calculated here if you remember that this is we already calculated room volume into number of air changes per hour divided by 60 that is 32 cubic meter per minute so infiltration air is 32 cubic meter per minute and uh, this is the formula which we have used to calculate the infiltration load uh, this is the formula sensible infiltration load is this 20.44 into V infiltration T naught minus Ti that is delta T and latent infiltration load is 50,000 into V infiltration into delta W that is W naught minus Wi inside and outside temperature difference T naught Ti and W naught Wi specific humidity of the outside inside condition space so 20.44 in the factor from the for formula and 32 we already calculated infiltration uh, volume infiltration uh, flow rate and then delta t is the same for summer already explained before here and delta t for the moon zone is 13 and then you need to multiply all these factors the formula which i showed you before and you will get the infiltration load for summer and infiltration load for monsoon
then we have to calculate the internal load heat load due to the people due to the lightning since the number of people you can get this number of people from the seating plan of the architectural drawing or you can ask architecture engineer how many number of people are going to occupy this space since the number of people are 25 and uh, this factor we can get from uh, tables and charts from this one the heat gain from the occupant at conditioned space since the very light work seated work and this is the office building so sensible heat is 70 watt and latent heat is 45 watt so we are going to use this 70 watt per person 45 watt per person so 70 watt per person is uh, sensible heat and number of people are 25 you need to multiply these two to get the load internal heat load and, and then for summer and monsoon it will be same and the lightning load we need to get for watt per square meter how much watt per square meter we need to get this from tables and charts as you can see there is a typical lightning load this is our office room building so as you can see that for office room typically is uh, lightning power is 12 watt per square meter so we are going to use 12 watt per square meter 12 watt per square meter and the area of the office is 284.7 so area times 12 watt per square meter you will get the total lightning load for summer as well as winter it will be same so total internal heat load will be the sum of all these so and after that you need to calculate the room sensible heat load room sensible heat load it will be the sum of uh, solar heat gain transmission and uh, solar heat gain except walls and roof solar and transmission gain walls and roof solar and transmission and then transmission gain except walls and roof and then infiltration and bypass air load then internal heat load so it will be the sum of all these load which we already calculated above this is for the summer and this is for the monsoon then we are going to add 10 percent safety factor for summer as well as moon so this will be added in this one 10 percent so to get the total room room sensible heat total room sensible heat will be 53,000 for summer and 38,000 for monsoon then we have to calculate the room latent heat load calculations in this one we have to use the formula I will show you now from the tables and charts Uh, then we have to calculate the room uh, latent heat due to the number of people and uh, due to the number of people and uh, infiltration so due to infiltration the latent heat will be as uh, this one yeah, we already calculated before infiltration that is 32 cubic meter per minute and uh, this is the factor which we have used this is the formula we have used here latent heat due to infiltration 50,000 V infiltration W naught minus WI that is delta W it's 50,000 factor from the formula and then this is for summer humidity ratio and this is for monsoon humidity ratio this is summer humidity ratio and this is monsoon humidity ratio so we have used the same value here for summer as well as monsoon then you just need to multiply all these factors to get the total load latent heat load for summer and monsoon then we have to calculate the latent heat load due to the number of people since we know that 25 number of people occupy this space and each one with 45 watt latent load so 45 watt per person is the latent heat and we know that 25 percent so 25 into 45 you will get the total load due to the number of people latent load due to the number of people is 1125 for summer as well as monsoon then uh, total latent uh, load will be the sum of these two due to the infiltration and due to the number of people and then we add the uh, 5% safety factor to this one 5% safety factor plus this value it will give you the total latent heat load this one in summer is 28,639 and for monsoon is 39,887 then room total 
heat load will be the sum of sensible plus latent that is sensible total and latent total it will be the sum of total heat load will be the sum of sensible plus latent this is for summer and this is for monsoon and then we have to calculate the outside air heat load outside air heat load uh, first we have to calculate the outside air requirement due to the number of people and due to the area so how did we get this 9.44 cubic meter per minute outside air move back to our uh, tables and charts as you can see this is the ventilation requirement per person and per area since this is an office space we are going to use this row outdoor air requirement per person is 0.15 per person is 0.15 and we know that we have 25 people in this space so due to the people it's 3.75 and outdoor air requirement due to the area is 0 0.02 cubic meter per minute per square meter 0 0.02 into area we know that our space is 284.7 so 5.69 plus 3.75 due to the number of people so total is 9.44 so this is how we got 9.44 outdoor air cubic meter per minute that is uh, 5.69 plus 3.75 so this is how we got this 9.44 cubic meter per minute and we know the contact factor is 1 minus bypass factor that is 1 minus 0.12 is 0.88 and the factor we use in formula from the formula is 20.44 and this is the sensible outdoor air heat load and temperature difference already explained you before outdoor design temperature for summer minus indoor design temperature for summer that is 20 degree centigrade and outside design temperature for monsoon minus indoor design temperature for monsoon that is 13 degree celsius and then total load will be the 9.44 into 0.88 into 20.44 into 20 same for monsoon you just need to use this temperature instead of this uh, summer temperature monsoon we have 13 so we have used 13 and this factor you need to multiply to get monsoon load then same way you have to calculate the latent outside air latent heat load this one is outdoor air requirement same that is 9.44 cubic meter per minute and factor for outdoor air requirement is uh, latent heat is 50,000 from the formula and this is the specific uh, humidity ratio for summer it is outdoor humidity ratio minus indoor humidity ratio for summer and this one is outdoor uh, humidity ratio minus indoor humidity ratio for monsoon we already calculated before these values so uh, this is the formula you have to use you need to multiply outdoor air with a contact factor with 50,000 factor from the formula with the humidity ratio you can get the total watts to, uh, or load due to the outside air latent heat load outside air latent heat load for summer outside air latent heat load for monsoon so total heat load will be the sum of room total heat load plus outdoor air sensible plus latent heat load so this is the total heat load for summer conditions and this is the total heat load for monsoon conditions so 92,000 is for summer 90,000 is for monsoon 5% safety factor we are going to add here and then we calculate the grand total load grand total load will be the sum of this one plus 5% safety factor this one plus 5% safety factor for monsoon and how we get the tonnage of the system tonnage of system is equal to this total load divided by 3500 you will get the tonnage that is 27.7 ton required for summer and this load divided by 3500 that is 27.2 ton for monsoon and sensible heat factor how you will get sensible heat factor sensible heat factor is equal to room sensible heat divided by room total heat room sensible heat is this one total heat is this one so you get 0.65 and for, for moons for summer and same way you can get for monsoon so now we check the selected ADP that is operators dew point from this table as you can see that uh, 
this 75 this is for different temperatures like uh, 76 degree Fahrenheit 75 degrees Fahrenheit and 72 degrees Fahrenheit this is basically inside design dry bulb temperature in our case you know that we have inside design temperature is 23 degrees Celsius so if you convert this into Fahrenheit it will be around 74 degrees Fahrenheit so we have the table here for 72 and 75 so we are going to use this 75 degrees Fahrenheit uh, outside uh, inside dry bulb temperature and this 45, 50, 55, 60 these are the relative humidities we know that indoor relative humidity we have selected is 50 percent so according to these two conditions and our effective sensible heat factor from our excel sheet is 0.65 for summer so with these two conditions 75 dry bulb and 50 uh, percent relative humidity these are the effective sensible heat factors so over is 0 0.65 it is between 0 0.64 and 0 0.66 so 0 0.44 it's 34 degrees Fahrenheit and 0 0.66 it is uh, 40 degrees Fahrenheit so it will be between these two values so 0 0.65 will be between 0 0.64 and 0 0.66 so 34 and 40 so we'll take 37 degrees Fahrenheit so if you convert this 37 degrees Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius it will be around 2.8 degrees centigrade so 2.8 degrees centigrade is our ADP for summer so that will be around 3 degrees centigrade we have selected here so in same way you will select the ADP for monsoon condition so after that you have to calculate the dehumidified air quantity so dehumidified dry is equal to 1 minus bypass factor into room temperature minus ADP all of the things we know that bypass factor is 0.12 we already know that and room temperature is 23 degrees celsius and ADP is 3 degrees centigrade so if you put all the values you will get the dehumidified rise for summer is 17.6 and dehumidified rise for monsoon is 18.92 then you have to calculate the dehumidified air that is dehumidified air quantity for summer and for monsoon so if you calculate the dehumidified air quantity it will be by this formula that is room sensible heat divided by 20.4 into dehumidified dry dehumidified dry you calculated above air for summer and monsoon so room sensible heat you also know that we already calculated before this is the room sensible heat so after putting all the values in the formula you will get 148 cubic meter per minute for summer and 101 for monsoon and safety factor we, are, we will apply here for dehumidified air flow that is 7 for summer and 5 for a winter 5, 5 for monsoon so 5% of this value will be 7 and 5% of this value 101 will be 5 so total dehumidified uh, uh, air flow rate will be the sum of 5% and this dehumidified air it will be around 156 cubic meter per minute for summer and 106 cubic meter per minute for monsoon so this is how you can calculate the, the dehumidified CFM, tonnage and total load of uh, the central design office. So if you know the uh, tonnage and uh, dehumidified air quantity that is in 156 cubic meter per minute obviously this uh, we are going to select machine based on summer condition because it will fulfill the monsoon condition also because this what whichever is higher you need to select the machine according to that so summer is higher compared to monsoon so we'll select machine based on summer conditions so if if we know that the tonnage and the flow rate and if we perform the static pressure calculations so based on static pressure calculations dehumidified air quantity and uh, tonnage we can select our machine so this is how you can perform the cooling load calculation for central design office so if you uh, if you have uh, got this process in your mind you can calculate cooling load for any space in the building so for more videos keep watching my channel and don't forget to subscribe thank you bye bye